everyone and welcome to namehero.com. In today's video, I want to talk about backing up your WordPress website and how we automatically do our backups here at Name Hero and how you have access to them right inside of cPanel. So if you notice any of our web hosting packages, our basic web hosting, our reseller hosting, um, they have free and automatic backups nightly. And if you're a reseller, this means all of your accounts as well. So if you have customers, of course, that you're signing up, all of their websites are backed up too. Now there's just one or two conditions really that need, need to be met. The first one is the accounts cannot be over 100,000 inodes or files, so to speak. If your account has more than 100,000 files, unfortunately, we cannot include that in our daily backups because that would put too much stress on the hard drives and create a slowdown across the servers. And of course, we don't want that because we've optimized our platform for speed, especially with WordPress. Therefore, if you have more than 100,000 inodes, it's probably a good option to get a VPS so you can scale um, along with that and have your files automatically backed up. Now, with our VPSs, you have to order the backups separately. They're not included, but as you go to configure that, um, you'll see them in there. And the same goes for our reseller hosting accounts. 100,000 inodes per account, that's not for your entire reseller account, so per cPanel that you create, um, will back up as many as you have, as long as they are 100,000 inodes or less. And also, an account cannot exceed 20 gigabytes. So I would say very few of you are ever going to use 20 gigabytes of space. But once again, just like the inodes, accounts that are larger than 20 gigabytes, it puts, too, it puts too much stress on the hard drives, and we cannot include those in our backups. So you will be responsible for your own backups if you have more than 100,000 inodes. So I want to show you a demonstration account, and I want to show you how these are conducted and how to check your inodes and all that good stuff um, so you know for your own records. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my demo account and I'll just hover over account, click log in. And once I log in, I'll be brought to a page that looks not like this. It looks like this here. And I'll navigate to my hosting package that I want to look. So I'll go to cloud web hosting and I'm going to navigate to this starter cloud, kcmowax.com. That's going to be our demonstration account. So this is our dashboard for that account. And this is where we can manage everything such as our disk usage, our bandwidth usage and access cPanel. So you can see we are at 74 megabytes on the site, well within the 20 gigabyte range. And this is a, a WordPress website that doesn't have a lot of content yet, but it's got a full WordPress install, a custom theme. So you can kind of see, you know, how that rel is relative to you. Um, just a basic WordPress install does not use up much space at all. So let's log into cPanel. Under Actions, I'm going to click Log into cPanel. And once I get here, you'll notice on the right, the statistics, you can see our inodes. So we're at 2,750 for this site. So that's a, a basic WordPress install, um, which is a standard theme. Um, it has like 3,000 files, right? So it's not going to come close to that 100,000 file limit. So if you put that into perspective, you really have to have a tremendous website to kind of reach these limits. Now, it's not to say that it doesn't happen, because we do have customers here at Name Hero that, that does happen to. Um, and we do have packages that allow more than 100,000 inodes, but still they're not going to be included in the daily backup realm because, again, that's just not feasible with our backup system to, to be able to back that up and to keep um, as fast speeds as we offer. Okay, so once um, we can confirm that we are under 100,000 inodes and we know we're using less than 20 gigabytes of space, we know that it's included in the daily backups for free. So what we want to look for is CP Remote. So if we scroll down here to the bottom, you can see this tab called Backup Administration, and you're going to see the CP Remote Dashboard, Email Restore, View Restore Logs, Domain Restore, Restore My Home, Check Restore Progress, Database Restore, and File or Directory Restore. So you have all these different options. Um, so the first one is just the dashboard, and it doesn't really show much. It just it shows nothing, really. Um, and it links to the rest of the links that you saw on the main page inside of here. So these links that are on the same tab here, that's what's in the dashboard. I don't know why they kind of coded it up like that. And I know it can be a little confusing, so that's why I want to explain it. So first off, we have the domain restore. So if you have a web hosting package that has multiple add-on domains, then you might just find yourself wanting to restore one domain completely. Maybe the whole domain needs restored. So that's when you would use that. The database restore, this is going to allow you to select which database needs restored. So I can click in here and show you. There is only one database in here, which is the KCMO Wax underscore staging database. Um, so if I needed to restore this, I could select it from this backup and then click select database to restore and it would begin the restore right now. So I'm not going to do that for this time. 
Um, let's go back here and I want to show just the domains. I don't have more than one domain, but I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see our domain, kcmowax.com. That's our main domain. And if I wanted to restore it, I would just select this backup from yesterday and click restore. And that would just restore this domain. So if I have multiple domains in my account, then it would give me that option to select which domain. If I go on back down here, um, I've got the email restore and I only have um, one email account set or actually I don't have any email account set up. So there's no data in this table. If I had email accounts set up, they would be listed here. And that's important if you, you know, if you have someone, maybe you have a, a multiple people in your organization and someone somehow loses a really important email and they want their whole email box restored, we can restore it as long as we have that backup. Restore my home. This is going to restore everything in your home directory. Now your home directory is where all of your files live, all your emails, all your static files and all that. So this is going to restore all of that. And so you can see you just select the um, backup and click restore home directory. Now warning, this includes all your email addresses, all your email files. So if you restore that, it's going to restore everything to the latest backup, including the files. And then we got file or directory restore. If you just find yourself deleting one file or one directory that you needed, you can enter that name in here. So you can see it's going to first go for home slash kcmoax. Now we have any file or folder that we need to restore. So maybe this is your public HTML. If you want to restore all of that, you could just leave that. Maybe if you go to slash wp-content, maybe it's your WP content folder. And it's going to pull whatever particular file or folder that you type in here. Maybe it's like the index, and this probably wouldn't be a good, good we probably would never need to restore this one. But if we did, we could just enter the exact file name in there and then click restore, and it's just going to restore this one file. Let's go back here. So we also have our restore logs. So once we do a restore, it's going to it's going to log the progress inside of there. And then we also have the progress here, which will show you the ones that are in progress. So let's let me show you an example of how this works. So I want to go over here. I want to click on KCMOX and you can see the site is redirecting right now. Let me move that redirect so you can see me actually. I want to actually break the site and then bring it back online. So I'm going to remove this redirect, remove and go back to here and click on the domain. So now, and we're still getting the redirect. Um, I actually want to show the WordPress. It's cached, so it's not going to. It doesn't want to show me the WordPress. So I can open a new window and do it here. Okay, so here's the blog itself, right here. So I want to break this. I want to break this to where it doesn't work. So we have to restore it. So this is the blog page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my file manager. And let's delete some files. <laughs> now, again, I don't recommend going and playing like I'm doing because I'm in a demo account, um, but I just want to show you in case something like that does happen. So let's just say I foul it up and delete the index. Delete. Okay, now if I go back here and refresh, wow, 404, not found. So not good, right? Now, if that was to a lot of files, I, if it was just one file, then I can just restore that one file, correct? Well, if I wanted just to say, all right, I've messed up the site really bad, I want to restore everything. So I would go to restore my home, click here, click restore home directory, yes, and now it's just going to begin to restore that. So the requested home directory restore has been started, kindly, kindly monitor the restore files. So we get a logs, restores in progress, and you can see it's in progress here. Once it's completed, it's going to be in here and it will say completed. So what we want to do is go to restore in progress, and it's already finished. So um, good timing. And we go to my restore logs and we can download this log if we want to read all of it to see what was restored. But now if we go back to our site and click on refresh, you can see it works again because it pulled the backup and restored it that fast. I mean, it's almost instantaneously. Now, if you have a huge home directory, it might take longer. Um, obviously, the more files you have, the longer that process runs. But you just need to keep refreshing the um, progress page. And once that um, restore in progress says no data available in this table and it moves over to my restore logs, then you know the process has completed. Now the same goes true for databases. If you want to go back and restore your database, you could do so by clicking here and you can see we've got two inside of here and we could restore 
um, the database from the previous backup. Now, I don't recommend going in and actually deleting your database because then you're going to lose the option to restore it because once you drop the database from your cPanel, it's going to drop it from the restore. Now, of course, our admins have access to the full account restore from the night before, but you still don't want to go around doing that. Um, but that's really how our internal backup system works. Um, the same goes, and again, I don't have any emails in this account here, but if you had emails, they would be listed just like um, the domains are listed or just like the home directory is listed. Um, it's the same type of data that you see inside of here. Um, so you could always go back and restore the email, restore the home directory. And we actually get a lot of requests for restores. Um, so that was kind of the catalyst behind making this video was saying what was showing exactly well you can actually do this yourselves um, of course our admin team they can restore on their end as well but um, if you have access at your fingertips sometimes it just makes sense to do it yourself now I want to talk about one other backup option that we have here at name hero um, all of our reseller accounts and basic web hosting accounts have the op option to add drop my site um, at Name Hero, since we only do one day backup retention, sometimes people say, well, that's really not enough for me. And, and I agree, you should have more than just one day. We just do one day complimentary. So if you, you don't want to pay any more and you have that one day, great. Um, but you can use Drop My Site to make an additional copy. So if you order that during the checkout process, you're going to see this extra tab called Website Backup, and you can see Drop My Site's logo. So we can click on there. Now, inside of Drop My Site, you can see it backs up your website, so it puts the subdomain separately than the domain, so you can see caseymowax.com's backed up once a day, here's how many files in storage, here's the last backup it has, the next backup's in 8 hours and 43 minutes. It's also backing up the um, subdomains, the staging subdomains. Um, the databases, it's backing up the caseymowax staging domain database, as well as the other database in there. And we can go down here, and it's backing up just the root email. Um, so we didn't see this with our internal backups because there was no emails in it, so it didn't even back that up. So this allows for additional backups to be stored, and, and I highly recommend it um, as an option. You know, if you're not doing your own internal backups, don't just rely on our automatic ones. Uh, you know, it's always best to have more. If you go to settings, you can um, I go to account settings, and it's not in there. Um, it's actually back here, at dashboard. And we can click on the edit schedule. And this right here will tell us how many days we can keep. So when you sign up for Drop My Site, you have to choose how many gigabytes of backup space that you want. So depending on how much space that you choose, this determines how many backups that you can keep. Um, most people, if it's a small regular site like this, they'll say, hey, I want to keep 30 because it's going to take a while to use up um, 5 gigabytes. If I'm only using 75 megabytes of space, um, I'm going to have plenty of room to keep 30 days of backups. Now, the more space you use, the less you can keep, but you have that option. And you can also change the frequency of these. So if you want to do it once a day, great. If you want to change it just twice a week or once a week or twice a month or once a month or on demand, you can do that as well. You can set the start time, what time you want it to back up. Maybe you have a site that you update quite frequently and then you have a time maybe in the evening um, wherever you may be located that things slow down. So maybe you want to take a backup during those evening hours um, so you get all the day's work. And you can also set your time zone here to make sure it's backing up um, according to your time zone. These are exclusions. These are files that it's not going to back up, such as um, dot files um, and cache files, because cache files can take up a lot of space, and a lot of times, or most of the time, they're not needed um, for a backup. And same with error logs and stuff. You know, those can be really large, and you just don't want to back those up most of the time. So by default, they're not backed up. Um, but you can go through and edit any of these, and even if you want to take a backup right now, you could just click. Do you want to back it up right now? Well, yeah, let's let's do a backup. And, um, you know, this is especially good if you've made a lot of changes to your website and you've got it just how you want it looking. Well, you might want to go ahead and just run a backup. Um, I want to show you, too, um, after this finishes, or we'll just go back to dashboard while that runs, and show you how you go about to doing a restore. So, for example, like on this database right here, just the, the regular database here, you can click on Restore Database, and this shows this is a staging database. This has 187 rows, and you can pick if you have multiple dates, and this is a, an example site, so I only have one date in here now, but if you've done 30 days, you can choose the actual date for the backup of the database, and then you can kind of compare the number of rows and you can actually restore just the click of a button here. 
and you can see restoring the below database will overwrite the existing database. There will be no more warnings once the restore is started. There is no way to stop it. So that's just kind of a warning that hey, you know, once it restores to this, it's going to restore to it. It's going to overwrite your current changes. Um, but you can restore on demand right here inside of cPanel. And so this that backup is still taking. But I want to show you what the home looks like as well. If I wanted to restore um, files from the home directory, I can click in here and I can just choose individual files that need to be restored. Remember earlier we um, deleted the index, but it, let's say I made a modification to it and I want to go back to the 24th, I could select the 24th, I could select the index, and I could click restore files and it's going to restore that index to that backup on the 24th. And that's with any, any of these files in here. So a lot of times we see customers that will make an edit to say their menu or something and it doesn't work out the way they had planned. Well, they can actually restore the files or restore the database back to its current state. Um, and that's from the previous day. So this is very helpful because especially those of you who have really large accounts, you don't want to have to restore the whole account because you might be looking at 30 minutes to restore, maybe even an hour if you've got a, a really large account. So this way you can just restore those individual files or folders, the WP content folder especially is where all your images and, and media is stored in WordPress. So maybe you just want to restore that in the index. You could just click restore files and just those two files individually, that folder and that file will be restored. Just like the databases though, once it overwrites them, that's what you're going to be left with. So it tries to give you that warning. And you can see now it's um, applying this backup to the site and you can see what directory it's current working, working in, 350 files have been backed up and it's gonna go through and back up everything. So this will probably take just a couple minutes to run, um, but you can do on-demand backups with this. You have your settings, just your account settings. Your, for, you can put this in here if you want, your first name and last name. If you wanna change your password, um, you can do so here. Um, Two-factor authentication, if you wanna add that, you can do that as well. Um, I recommend just adding the two-factor to your Name Hero account, and then it's going to kind of protect um, against all of this stuff as well. Um, they also have a monitoring system. So you can click Add Website Blacklist, and this will actually check Google's database for any uh, malware threats that comes up against your site. So, for example, we can go to, we can type in just the URL. Let's do kcmowax.com. and we can select the database, it's the main database, alert emails, and this is going to send you a, an alert if Google detects any malware or phishing alerts on the site. So let me tell you why that's important. Um, if you're, especially if you're someone who doesn't like to keep your site updated, um, those sites that are out of date are always vulnerable to malware. So this is going to actually monitor your site to Google's database every day. And if Google detects it's got malware on it, it's not going to back it up anymore. So that way you're not backing up malicious files and you can go restore to the last healthy date of the site and then, and then, and upgrade all your software. You can update everything from the previous state of when the site before it got infected with malware. So this is important, especially when dealing with WordPress, because those of you that have had a malware infection, you know how bad those can be because they can really inject your site and really mess it up. Um, so this way you actually know when you started to get those, um, get that malware alert and the backup stops. And so that way you're not backing up malicious files. Um, so that's right there inside of um, Drop My Site. And they also have a monitor too, if you want to monitor um, like the load time and stuff. So maybe if the site goes out, you could just add it in here and it will um, monitor just the headers. You can check with an iPhone or check with Firefox or whatnot. Um, and just check that. So there's just additional features that are inside of Drop My Site, the blacklist and the monitor. But you can manually add email addresses, you can manually add databases, and you can manually add websites. So this is also um, kind of important for those of our, that are resellers of ours. We unfortunately do not offer Drop My Site for our resellers customers. We, we're working on that, but at this time we don't. Now, if you have a couple customers that maybe you work with them closely, you can manually add their websites into your account here um, so they get backed up up as well inside of your Drop My Site account. So you do have that option, you do have that flexibility, um, but really this is um, just for the primary seed panel account of the resellers. So that's important to note. Now, if you don't have Drop My Site on your website, um, here's where you add it. So you go back to your client page for the package and click Upgrade Downgrade Options. 
And this is where you would select that drop my site. You can see I've got five gigabytes right now that when I initially signed up for the package, but I could upgrade that if I wanted to. Let's say I want to just get rid of it. I could get rid of it here um, and they'd be gone. Don't want to do that. But if I need to upgrade space, because of course five gigabytes, gigabytes might run out as the site grows, so I could upgrade to 10 gigabytes for $36. And then you would just click here to continue and it would automatically upgrade. So if you don't currently have this on your site and you want to add it, this is a, um, definitely a, a really recommended thing to do. And this is where you would go to do that. And you can select as much space as you need. Um, but inside of here, in the dashboard, you can monitor your usage. So you can see 35.9 megabytes out of five gigabytes used. So it's um, we've got plenty of room to grow on this site. So if you start encroaching on that limit, then that's when you want to look at upgrading it. Uh, but if you have a very basic WordPress site, five gigabytes is, of course, plenty. So that's really how the um, two main backup systems that we use here at Name Hero work. Um, if you are under 100,000 inodes and you want to download a backup to your computer, you can go in here and you can use cPanel's backup to do that. Um, this is always a good idea to download a full website backup once a month and just keep it on your computer or keep it on your external um, hard drive or keep it in your Dropbox. Um, just in case, you know, I'm the type of person that I do this with my personal sites, uh, just so no matter what, I always have my own data on my computer. So just in case something would happen that I needed it, it's there on my computer in my Dropbox and I know I can have access to it. So, you know, I do recommend doing that every once in a while. If you just want to get the home directory, you can do that. If you just want to get a database, you can get those here or your email forwards. Um, that's probably not needed unless you just have hundreds of them. Um, but that's another option too when it comes to backup. You'll notice the file restoration here that we don't we do not use this feature. Instead, we use the CP remote. So we have to go down here um, to get our restorations and stuff. So I think that might confuse some customers um, that we don't actually use um, the file restoration under files. We use it all the way down here under backup administration. Um, so just to summarize, accounts that are 100,000 inodes or less are included nightly in our backup as long as you don't have more than 100,000 inodes or 20 gigabytes or more space um, in the cPanel account. It's 100% free. Every single night it backs up. You have access to restore these right under backup administration. Um, and I also recommend adding the Drop My Site backups to your site to give you an additional um, up to 30 days that you can retain uh, so you have everything covered on your website. Now, it is important to note for liability reasons that Name Heroes complimentary backups are done at best faith. We cannot always guarantee that something is backed up inside of there. Um, I would say 99% of the time it is, but in that case that we didn't catch a file in the backup or a database didn't back up correctly, um, we just can't be held um, liable for that. So it's always nothing can ever um, substitute for your own backups because you should you know keep at least one uh, one backup a month on your Dropbox on your computer uh, just for safekeeping. But we do automatically backup accounts. You do have access to those inside of your cPanel, and it's really done as convenience and of course a peace of mind that you know if you have one on your computer, you have them inside of cPanel, and you have Drop My Site, you really have your data secured, and it should allow you to sleep a lot better. So if you have any questions on this, feel free to ask. Feel free to let us know. We'd be more than happy to answer those for you. Um, you can restore these on your own, but if you need our support team to help, submit a ticket and we'd be more than happy to do so. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Thanks everyone for using Name Heroes High Speed WordPress Optimized Web Hosting.